Good morning and welcome to Hope City Chapel. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kim and I have the privilege of continuing our journey through the book of Ruth. So let's get excited for today. If you remember last week, if you were able to join us, Jason provided an insight on the first five verses of the book. He took a look at some of the introduction pieces, how it kind of fits together in the history of the times and then he took a deep look at those first five verses so let's just kind of recap from last week we learned that the family had led that root uh, that naomi's family had fled israel and went to moab and moab was one of the enemies of israel so this was sort of in a disobedience right this was a disobedient act that they had committed at that time and they stayed there for over nine years and during those nine years Naomi endured several hardships with the loss of her husband and the loss of her two sons. And so what was left of that family was Naomi and her two daughters-in-law who were the, the wives of the husbands, of her sons. So today, let's take a, we're going to take a little bit more look at that, the rest of chapter one of Ruth. And we're going to see, you know, it's been very exciting for me to take time to sit and look at this book and just see how does it speak to me. And I was also richly blessed by a resource called Verse by Verse Ministries that you can find at versebyverseministries.org. And they just have a lot of information and a lot of background. And we're just going to kind of marry those together today as we look at this, these scripture. So before we start, let's just take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your blessing on us. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to sit together, to discuss, to look at your word in a new and enlightening way, Father. We just thank you that you will bless this time together, that you will open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to those things that you have for us today. And we just give you all the honor and the glory, and we just ask that you put our minds at, at rest, Father, and just let us just sit in your word and just continue to look towards you. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. All right, so... We're going to get right started at this. So just so you know what it's going to kind of look like today, we're going to look at the chapter in four, this rest of this chapter, I should say, in four parts. So the first section we're going to look at is verses 6 through 13. And remember, Naomi is now with her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah. So I'm going to take the Bible here. We're going to open it up. Again, if you want to read along and look at this also, Ruth is where we're at, chapter 6. So she got up with her daughters-in-law to return to the land of Moab. For in the land of Moab, she had heard that the Lord had visited his people by giving them food. She set out from the place where she had been and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with your deceased husbands and with me. May the Lord grant you that you each find rest in the house of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they raised their voices and wept aloud. They said to her, We will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Are there sons in my womb who could become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought that there was still hope for me, that I could have a husband tonight and give you birth to sons, would you wait until they were grown? Would you refrain from getting married? No, my daughters, it is much more bitter for me than for you, for the hand of the Lord has turned against me. All right, we're going to kind of take these verses and, and really look at them. So, one of the things we want to kind of start with is what would make Naomi leave? She's been there, as we said, for over nine years. She had come with her husband and her two sons. So why would she want to go back? In verse 6, that's our, that's our clue to why Naomi is going back, right? It said the Lord had come and there was plenty of food, right? So this means that the drought has ended, the famine is over, and there's food that's plentiful in Israel. So more importantly, one of the things it said if we looked at it again, it says the Lord had visited, right? So they knew, the people knew that the Lord had his hand upon this once again, right? Just as the Lord had brought the famine for the consequence of Israel's disobedience, the Lord was bringing again his blessing and he was setting forth Israel in a path of blessing. So 
You have to kind of wonder, though, about Ruth and Orpah. They're with Naomi. They're going to set on this path. Why wouldn't they just stay, right? Why wouldn't they stay in Moab? They had originally been Moabites, right? They had lived there. That's where they got married. They met their husbands. So why wouldn't they, why would they actually start to go on that path? And the, the answer to that is in those times when you got married, you left the connection. Your connection was broken with your family because you are now connected to your husband's family. So that's sort of why, um, not sort of, that's actually why they were going, right? They didn't have, they didn't think they had any hope in Moab, so they were going to follow Naomi. So they're also widows, right? So the, everything's sort of harder. It's more difficult. They, their chance of survival is actually lower because they're widows and they don't have somebody to help them. And they also um, are unlikely to attract new husbands, right? They had been married once, so during that time, that was your likelihood of attracting another suitor was lower because you'd already been married. So Naomi recognizes the situation for what it is, right? She's a widow. She knows, what's, she knows the customs. She knows the patterns. So she's trying to be merciful to Ruth and Naomi. They had this connection to her through the marriage to her two sons, but she's taking a moment now in those other verses in verse 8 where she starts to bless them, to tell them to turn around, go back. You know, this is your home. So she blesses them and asks the Lord to be kind to them as she, they had been to her sons, right? It says to the dead, to her, their deceased husbands. And she also, you know, they, they, she loves them. You know, she's, she's giving this extra blessing, this extra kindness to them. And then furthermore, she calls for the Lord to grant them rest in this trial and this uncertainty. And some of the words, if we go back to it, she says, um, may the Lord grant you, this is in verse 9, may the Lord grant you that each of you find rest in the house of another husband. So Naomi is, is praying blessing on them that they would be able to remarry and find that path in life. So she's really trying to set them up um, to, to come out of this hard time and move towards the uh, the time of blessing but at that right the first time she says it she she says go and return and they they weep they weep with her and they they deny and say no we are with you Naomi they they stay this path they want to be sure that they're they're following what they're supposed to in their customs and and they then they love her right they've been with her for many years and so they they, they stay there they feel obligated to be with them but she she says, no, no, you must go. And she sort of goes into a little bit of, let's say a little bit of a pity party, right? She says, what about me? Do I have any more sons? How do I get, I can't get remarried. Please go, right? Please go. And she releases them from their obligation to her. So let's see now, she keeps insisting. So now we're going to see how these two women um, kind of react to this second time of asking them about returning. So this is kind of, if you look at it, and step back before we read that. If you step back, they, they've, they're packing, right? Naomi wants to return to Israel. She knows there's going to be a land of, there's food now, and she's going to go back. So there has to be some deliberate acts that they're doing. The, the daughter-in-laws are probably packing a few things, right? They're not going to take a lot because obviously they're going to walk to where they're going. And it's a seven to ten, seven to ten, to ten day journey. That was a hard one to say this morning. It was a seven to ten day journey from Moab to Bethlehem, which that's, that's a long time to walk. So they're packing up, they're getting a few things together, I'm sure. So there's intention, there's, there's just that path forward. And now Naomi is kind of, they've walked a little bit. You don't know if they've stepped out of the house. It just says they've, they've, they've decided to go, right? They, they set out from the place. Did they walk a little bit or far? You don't know, but at some point, Naomi, maybe they're on the outskirts. I kind of see them on the outskirts of Moab. And Naomi's kind of second guessing, saying, you know what? Stay where you are. So that's the crossroads she's kind of created. You can go back. She's releasing them, or you can go with me. And she doesn't say with me, but I'm thinking maybe inside she's saying, or you can go with me. But she's releasing them. So in verse 14, let's go back to the Bible. It says, then they raised their voices and wept aloud once more. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Naomi looked. Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law has returned to her people and her gods. Return with her. So at this point, we see what was Orpah's decision. Orpah's decision was to go back to Moab. She had kissed Naomi in that final gesture of, gesture of love, and she departs. So I, 
I looked at this and I said, okay, Orpah was, she, she took that time, right? She had taken that time in the beginning and said, I'm going to pack up, right? They're packing those things for this journey. She was part of that. She was part of that. She had some inclination to go, right? She had inclination to return to Israel with Naomi. But she got posed the are you sure question, right? How many times in our lives have we been posed the are you sure question? We see a new job. Maybe we're in looking for a, a, uh, a promotion within our current workforce. Maybe we're in a relationship or we, we, want, we found somebody else that a friend we could connect with and we're sure they're going to be good for our lives. But somebody says to us, are you sure? And that are you sure can rock you, right? You're, you're convinced that there, this was where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be moving down this path. I'm supposed to, this is where God has sent me. But that, that somebody, Naomi Wright was a loved one. She was a loved one of Orpah. And, Orp, and Naomi's standing there going, are you sure? You, I release you, go back. Maybe somebody in your family, maybe your a loved one is saying to you, are you sure? And you're like, yes, I'm sure, right? The first time Naomi says, are you sure? What happens? Orpah says, no, I'm sure, right? They had said, they had wept aloud and, and said, yes, we're going to go. Um, she kisses them and raises her voice. And she says in verse 10, it says, we will return with you to your people. Are you sure? So I think what happens is, you know, Orpah probably started the are you sure started to say, mm, Israel's kind of scary, right? She doesn't know Israel. We don't know our new jobs. We don't know that new friendship or that new relationship. And so it's scary. It's scary to step out in some of those things. God, maybe it's an opportunity to minister to people. We don't want to step out in it because we know where we are, right? I'm sure Orpah could look around and say she knew the people in the town. She, she grew up there. She knew all the places. She knew all the street names. She could go wherever she needed to go with confidence. So the uncertainty probably and somebody that she loved saying, are you sure, sent her the other way. So it makes me say, how many times in my life have I let the are you sure keep me where I'm at instead of allowing myself to go forward in something that's greater? So that was Orpah. Orpah went back. So then there's Ruth, right? So let's see how Ruth does it, right? She clung to Naomi. So the word to cling means to cleave or be joined together. So we kind of learn, if we take our next chunk of verses, verses 16 and 17 that we're going to read, we're going to hear what Ruth's response is. So let's find 16 and 17. It says, But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. Your, wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will, shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and worse if anything but death separates you and me. Wow. We need to stop there for a second and say Ruth had an amazing conviction, right? How many times could we wish we had that same assurance, right? For those, what we were just talking about, the jobs or, or the relationships or something in ministry that we're to step out in. How could we, you know, have that conviction and not waver, right? Oprah, she wavered. She wasn't sure. That was scary. And she went back. Naomi said something's greater. And how many, how many times in our lives do we need to say there's something greater and not stay where we are and, and think that the comfortable and the just the ability to see what's around us makes us feel better, right? There, it, it is it's uneasy. It's unsettling to go out into new things, but we have to. God has so many things for us that are better than where we are today, and we need to have the conviction of Ruth to walk that out. We need to know that we know that we know, right? That where you go, I go. Where you stay, I stay. God, what you want me to do is what I want to do. Greater is he that lives in me, right? I need to do his, if I walk out his path, if we walk out his path, our life will take the next level and the next level and the next level, just as we see, that we'll see with Ruth. I don't want to be a spoiler, so we won't go too far into that, but let's stay there, and we'll go back and say, she was not swayed. Naomi said, are you sure? Are you sure? And Ruth was sure she stayed. And she also realized that there was something greater. She knew that if she stayed with Naomi, 
that she would still have that connection to God and that she could continue to grow in what she was already been learning in the past years in Moab, she knew could only get greater as they returned back to Bethlehem. So we have to ask ourselves, with those decisions we have in life of what God has for us, do we want to be an Orpah or do we want to be a Ruth? So we're going to go to the last sections now. It's the final section of Ruth chapter 1. It's verses 18 to 22. So when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So they went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women asked, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi. She, but she said, do not call me, call me Myra, because the Almighty has brought great bitterness to me. I was full when I left, but the Lord has caused me to return empty. Why should you call me Naomi when the Lord has opposed me? The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from the land of Moab with Ruth the Moab, her daughter-in-law. They came to Bethlehem at the start of the spring barley harvest. So at that point, Ruth was convinced to go, and she insisted. Naomi's insistence for her to stay turned into Ruth's insistence for her to go with her. And you have to guess that Naomi was probably a little relieved because I know I'm sure people, we've all done it. We want to be kind to somebody else. And we say, no, no, you go. You go ahead of me in line. Or you go. And sometimes deep down you're like, oh, okay, I got to go. They insist back, right? I'm guessing Naomi was probably like, thank goodness. I have somebody to walk with me for the next seven to ten days. I have somebody with me in Bethlehem, right? It had to be scary for Naomi. She's been gone for over nine years. What did it look like? What has changed? Obviously, there's... There's different people around, maybe, and things are moving. So it was probably refreshing for her inside to say, okay, I'm going to have Ruth, who I know loves me, and to go back with them. So they head back. They, do the, they walk their seven to ten days, and they get to Bethlehem. And she's greeted by those who remember her family. And they're, I'm going to guess they're probably a little excited. They probably were a little bit like, whoa, is that really her, right? It's been almost ten years. We see somebody we knew you know, a couple of jobs ago or maybe from school. You're like, oh. Is that really, you know, Steve? Oh, or is it really, you know, Sarah? And you're looking, they're doing the same thing. Is that Naomi? Right, she's been gone. And I learned something. Naomi means pleasant Jewish, Jewish wife. So it's a very lovely name, right? But she says, no, call me Myra. She's, she's leaning on, on being bitter, right? She, she has this bitterness against the Lord. And she's, she's put this on the Lord as if the Lord has done this to her. But if we remember back right to what Jason talked about last week and what we, we recapped this morning, the fact that they, Israel was sinning, so God had to bring that correction, right? So he brought the famine for the correction. Her husband and sons decide they should go to Moab, which was another sin, right? And then they, they married Moabites, which was another sin. So their life has had these different sins happen upon them. And so the correction and the things that have occurred isn't so much a doing of, she's putting the, the onus on God when it was actually their actions that brought it, right? There was consequences for their actions. And we all have those. We've made the decisions that weren't the best decisions and we've, we walked through those consequences. So she's turning it and saying, call me Myra, right? Because I'm bitter because the Lord is bitter against me, which is farther, the farthest from the truth. So she also says she left full, right? She had a husband and two sons and she came back empty. Again, we need to pause at that and say, hold on, Naomi, let's check our circumstances, all right? She had left the famine. There had been famine. They went to Moab, right? So she had left, and now she's returning to Israel, and it's full. It's got land of plenty now, right? The Lord's blessing is upon it. She had left with three men who were insistent on disobeying, right? They left to go to Moab. They, mar they allowed their sons to marry Moabite women, so they went against God's wishes. She's coming back with Ruth, who is all in, right? Ruth is all in. She wants to learn more. She wants to stay. So really, Ruth is a lot more full than she expects to be. And how often does that happen to us? We look at those worldly circumstances around us, and we become bitter about them, rather than looking and at it again and changing our perspective to that heavenly and godly perspective to say, wait, there's a lot of blessing in my life. 
there's a lot of blessing and she's kind of got it backwards and and she's kind of looking at these things about how well I don't have what they had and, and and you start to feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses and you get that bitter circumstances happening and we need to pause there and and write ourselves and write our thinking and say you know what God's got this and that he is blessing me and find those blessings look for them because they're there they're there and he wants to to make sure your eyes are on them so that you can continue to walk in the, the fullness. And she's kind of got her eyes down, right? She's looking at this, at her earthly circumstances, and she's doing a little bit of that, woe is me. Look what's happened to me. This is not where I wanted to be. And that happens, right? We have plans. We have things we, we believe are going to happen. And things, whether it's something we've chosen, circumstances put us in a different direction. But God has blessing in those two, and we have to change our way we look at it. She probably was mourning, right? And, and we get that. Her, she lost her husband and her two sons. But we need to not get stuck in bitterness with that. We need to, we, we walk through those things. We have those emotions. God's given us those emotions, and, and we need to walk through that. And it's not always pleasant, and we want to remember that. But there's always something that God has for us. So we need to remember to lift our eyes. Now, the one thing I, I think of with Naomi is she was a bit of an Eeyore. Now, if you, any of you are out there that remember Winnie the Pooh, I'm a big Winnie the Pooh fan. And lovely stories about children and just the playfulness of it all. But there is always Eeyore, right? There's always that one. Eeyore, no matter what, the sun could be shining and Eeyore would be, woe is me, it's going to rain today. If that's how we're always looking at life, then our perspective is way off because God has so much more than that. He has so much more than that. He has the, the happy, you know, Winnie the Pooh was always looking for the honey pot, and that's what God has for us. He has honey pots for us. We need to be on the lookout for them. Now, before we close today, I just wanted to take a few moments to look at the prophetic side of this, right? So, Naomi lived in the day of sinfulness. And she endured God's judgment through all this. So her family had let, fled the land and they went to the land of enemies. And these details picture the wife of, of Jehovah, the Israel, being judged because of their disobedience. And they were in the land of, and he scattered them, right? He's kind of scattered them. And this has reduced their numbers, bringing them a little bit of weakness. Now, if we look at the kind of change, right? So there's that piece, right? That the redemption, right? Unfortunately, they needed to have the correction and they're, they're brought down. They've reduced the numbers and they're, they're, they're walking through these last 10 years. So things are gonna change. And if we stop for a moment and look at that, one of the things I didn't know, the number nine is the judgment. So they've had nine years of judgment. They've had the famine in Israel. Naomi's lost her husband and her two sons. These are the judgments that have come to pass. Now. The number 10 is the number for testimony. So you've got Ruth, they're taking their walk back, they're going back to this land of plenty, right? So there's been this 10 years, means that the time of judgment on Naomi's family is about to end and it's gonna turn into a time of testimony. And I think we're gonna see some of those in the, right, the coming books in Ruth. So I'm excited to look forward to that. But we also wanna keep in mind that God's keeping his promise to Israel. He's preserving them as a distinct people among their family, excuse me, among their enemies. So no matter what is happening in our lives, right, we can look to it and say, God has got this. He's preserving them. He may bring correction into our life. He may bring, bring conviction onto things we're doing, but he's got this. He's got a blessing in store, just as he did for Ruth, or for Naomi and Ruth, right? They're turning. Things are going to be coming. They're going to be looking ahead to how they're going to make of the, make it survive in Bethlehem and so there's a there's that testimony that's coming and I, I just want to make sure that as we kind of winding down today that we just think about all the different levels that God has out there for us as we look into his word right so on the surface it's a, a, the story about a, a woman who's had a lot of loss and a daughter-in-law who's willing to walk with her through some of that right and then you're but there's other pieces of that you see that God's hand is upon it right he they may have they may have strayed right they went to Moab but he's brought blessing and it's not that Naomi can't come back to that blessing right she's coming back that's that's a picture to me of us coming back after we've strayed coming back and God's still there to bless us 
He never stops. He's always there to fulfill his promise for us. And we have to remember that. We have to stand firm in that, that even if we have an oops, right? And we have our oopses from time to time. Step back. Say, God, I made a mistake. And his blessing is there. His blessing is there. And, and, don't, and don't stop and, and make, as Naomi wanted to do, change her name to bitterness. That's not the way to do it, right? We don't want to stay in that Eeyore situation. We want to be that joy, that light that we can be to the people and to ourselves, right? We, I, I just pray that you hear that, that we can be the joy and the light to ourselves and to others. God does that through us and just to be be open be open to that and I pray that as we continue to study the book of Ruth that it'll bring revelation to you I know as we did like I said I was super pumped when I was talking through some of this with Jason talking about Orpa and just having revelation that you know sometimes we stay in the place we don't want to stay because it's comfortable and we stay because we're the next step isn't always so sure but know that it's that step of faith, right? Stepping out. If you know, as Ruth did, that you know, then don't worry about those circumstances. Don't worry about the unknown. God's got it. He's got it, and he's ready to work it out for you. So I just pray as we continue to study Ruth, that you continue to get things in you that maybe they were there before. You know, it's not anything new. We haven't something different, but sometimes it just sticks a little bit more that helps us to have that conviction that Ruth had and keeps us moving forward. So next week, they're going to be moving into chapter two, and we'll be looking forward to joining us then. And you know what? Let's just take a moment to pray as we close out here today. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, that you joined us here this morning, that you've brought some revelation to us, and that you are with us always, that you are the joy and the light that shine through each of us, and you just make our day, Father. We look forward to all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you would like to reach out to us and learn more about Hope City, please, you can go to hopecitylife.com. We're there to pray for you, and there's general information there for you also. Have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.